Welcome back, Christian soldiers, to Praise the Lord and Pass the Ammunition, the show that calls for Christian soldiers to wake up and fight evil. We were talking before the break of all the, the evilness that is on our television being shown to the young minds of our Christian soldiers. I mean, we live in a country where the, the, the top-rated shows amongst adults are about uh, mafia men and, 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 uh, and desperate whorish housewives and sodomites. I mean, a show about two men raising a child is the number one show in the country. Meanwhile, the, the Honorable Pat Robertson's audience is dwindling by the boatloads. Well, that, that's another topic for another time. We have some callers who have been on hold since before the break who want to chime in. So, caller, you're on the air. Uh, Willie? Yep. All right, well, well, first of all, I just want to say praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. Amen, brother. What's your comment? Well, uh, earlier on, you was talking about, about Barney and them tele, tubby, television mm -hmm. thingies. Yeah. Well, there's something else that's gay on TV that's always overlooked, and well, that's Bert and Ernie on Sesame Street. Mm -hmm. I mean, here are two supposedly grown men who live together and share a bed not more than one foot away from each other. Oh, and at times, Ernie crawls into Bert's bed to eat cookies. So don't get crumbs mm -hmm. in his own bed. I, mean, I, I just don't think this is a good image for our children to be watching. I mean, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, well, first of all, brother, I want to thank you for coming in and, and spotting on this and, and calling in about this. You see, I have thought about this for years, and I have come to see right through this conspiracy. You see, all those years ago when Sesame Street first got put on the air, you know, they were trying to instill a seed in the mind of our young Christian soldiers that two men conjugating together is not amoral but normal. And now all these years later, all these gay marriage bills are on the table. You think it's a coincidence? I don't. I can see right through it. And you need to wake up, Christian soldiers. Next caller, you're on the air. Am I on the air? You certainly are, sugar. Well, first of all, praise the Lord and pass the ammo. Oh, amen, sister. Now, I hadn't watched Sesame Street in years. I mm -hmm. usually sit my children down in front of the tube so I can go do some cleaning, gardening, shopping. You know, like a good Christian woman search. Anyway, the Walmart, there was this boycott in front of it yesterday, so mm -hmm. I sat down and I watched Sesame Street with him, and I was very disturbed by the character of the Count. I mean, my children were watching a vampire. Why would anyone want their child to watch and learn from a soulless, satanic, undead vampire? Well, I want to thank you very much for calling in on this, sister, because this brings up to some, me to something that is just pure evil to the minds of our young Christians. And that is the occult. And that is why I do not, I do not allow my children to watch Sesame Street. And I do not read Harry Potter books. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to read a couple of quotes here I found from a website in New York City. This is off of a news website. This first one is from a girl in the great state of South Carolina who is all of six years old. Hermione is my favorite because she's smart and has a kitty. Jesus died because he was weak and stupid. I'm going to pause for a moment while you reflect on the fact that that's from a six-year-old girl. And once again, folks, there was a conspiracy here from the get-go. And I'm going to read a quote now from the author of those devil-loving books. These books guide children to an understanding that the weak, idiotic son of God is a living hoax who will be humiliated when the rain of fire comes and will suck the greasy uh, phallus of the dark Lord while we, his faithful servants, laugh and cavort in victory. You think I'm lying? You think I'm making this up? You can go check this out yourself. All right? I'm going to put a link on lordandammunition.com, but if you want to find it out, just search Harry Potter on this news website. It's www.theonion.com. This is a sad time in America. Be afraid, folks. Be very afraid. Well, I've just been handed an announcement on a different note that I'd like to read. This Saturday morning at Morning View Baptist Church, Miss Anita Rayburn will be doing a charity gun cleaning. So hunting season's right around the corner, and I know you're going to want to get your guns clean. Well, my producer is saying it's time to go to a break, so we're going to take a short break, but stay on the line, callers, because when we come back, we're going to get into such topics as uh, uh, Kermit and Miss Piggy as an interracial couple, mm -hmm. uh, SpongeBob SquarePants as a walk-in contraceptive, and worst of all, Dora the Explorer being Mexican. We'll be right back, and in the meantime, praise the Lord and pass the ammunition.
Guys, are you finding your lunches boring these days? Are the ladies not looking at you the way they used to when men would eat things like hoagies and sub sandwiches? Do you sit around wishing you were more Euro trashy, but don't know how? You know you want to spend $12 on lunch, but how do you make sure you're trendy and fashionable enough to satisfy the requirements of your empty friends? Well, we suggest you try the new Blimpy Grilled Flatbread Sun-Dried Yellow Plum Tomato Pesto Grilled Avocado Portobello Watercress Smoked Brie Fajita Panini Wrap. That's right. The new Blimpy Grilled Flatbread Fajita Sun-Dried Yellow Plum Tomato Pesto Grilled Avocado Portobello Watercress Smoked Brie Fajita Panini Wrap will not only drain your wallet and your breath, but it will impress all the people around you in the overpriced yuppie bistro that used to be called a store before men were reduced to whimpering feminist sissies. So go right out today and get yourself the new Blimpy Grilled Flatbread Fajita Sun-Dried Yellow Plum Tomato Pesto Grilled Avocado Portobello Watercress Smoked Brie Fajita Panini Wrap. Who cares that it's twelve ninety nine for half a sandwich? You spend that much in your goddamn fagacino latte. Good evening. I am Alan DeGeneres, and tonight on Off the Beaten Path, we're going to be chatting with Miss Josephine Gerbils, lecturer and author of Preemptive Strike, Keeping America's Edge, which is celebrating its eighteenth week at the top of the bestseller charts. Miss Gerbils. Gerbils. Oh, I'm I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, uh Gerbils. Um in your book, you come out very strongly in favor of the United States Patriot Act. Now yes. tell me, what would you say to the various civil liberties groups that are trying to repeal it? <laughs> These are people who blindly worship our founding fathers, which might seem harmless and maybe even a little cute at first, but let's not forget that a lot of those guys were dangerous and some of them were outright nuts, like Thomas Jefferson, whew, clearly an advocate of terrorism. What? The tree of liberty must be watered with the blood of tyrants and patriots? <laughs> McVeigh had those words on his t-shirt the day he terrorized America. Well, I, I wouldn't say that you could blame Thomas Jefferson for the Oklahoma City bombing. Well, you're wrong, but worse than the violence our founders incite from the grave is the way they blatantly encourage people to endanger America by obsessing over freedom. I mean, every week some moron writes me saying those who give up precious liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither and lose both. Uh, wasn't it Benjamin Franklin that said that? And he's parroted by every America-hating idiot in the country. Tell me, should we let Al-Qaeda overrun America so nobody gets frisked at the airport? I, 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 mean, I hardly think that you can call It's clear that you hardly think. Freedom is not free, folks. The cost of freedom is you have to give up some freedom to have freedom. <sighs> okay. Um, now, how, how, how then do you balance... Uh, the need to have a government that is transparent and accountable with the need for security. <laughs> Sorry. Transparency and accountability? Come on. That would help with poodle skirts. <laughs> All right. Maybe back in the 1700s, a transparent government was fine. Back then, all you had to do was make sure the British weren't crossing the Atlantic. So you've done your homework. Whatever. Defending America is clearly more complicated now. And the Founding Fathers always intended that we would alter the Constitution, even scrap it if need be, in order to protect and defend our homeland. But no, 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 wait. Do you think that the original patriots would approve of the Patriot Act? Yes, I think a lot of them would. Alexander Hamilton, John Adams, definitely. Yes, Thomas Jefferson would have a hissy fit. You know it is disgusting the way liberals lionize an irresponsible anarchist like that while demonizing a truly great man like Joe McCarthy. Yes, now, um, what, 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 what would you say uh, uh, to, to, to the various um, people who have taken to comparing the Patriot Act, say, to the emergency edicts uh, passed in Germany after the Reichstag <sighs> fire? That I'm so tired of people comparing them. Bush to Hitler. I mean, it's so unoriginal. Okay, yes, some of the Bush administration policies do resemble those of the Nazis, but <laughs> that's nothing new. We've been borrowing from the Reich for years. Liberals only whine about it if it happens when a Republican's in office. Take the 1968 gun control bill. Whole paragraphs translated directly from the Nazi let weapons law. But are liberals trying to repeal that? No, and why should they? We had a senator at Nuremberg resourceful enough not just to convict war criminals, but to see where we could learn from them. I mean, that's the kind of ingenuity America needs. 
Let's face it, evil though they were, the Nazis were efficient and effective. What they used for evil, we can use for good. It's not your methods, it's your motives. Um, and, and on that note, um, th th thank you for, for stopping by. It's my pleasure. Yes. Um, now, now join us uh, next week when we'll be chatting with a midget who's in favor of big government. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. <laughs> so I've come to realize how ridiculous it is that how we choose a president in this country. Like, a couple years ago during the election, it never mattered what they did within the last year, just what they did like 35 years ago. And then everybody was always talking about who would you rather share a beer with or, or who would you rather be stuck in an elevator with? I mean, like to share a beer with Ozzy Osbourne or be stuck in an elevator with Pamela Anderson in heat doesn't mean I think they make good presidents. I mean, I can't even stomach George Bush on television, let alone being stuck in an elevator with him. You know, be like, we're stuck. Very deducive, Mr. President. I'm trying to jar it loose, you see. So, stop, stop. Stop pushing buttons, Mr. President. Man, I'm bored. Let's play a game. Let's play I Spy. We're in an elevator, Mr. President. There's nothing to spy. God, man, I'm still bored. I, here, I got a ball of yarn you can play with. <laughs> so I guess I wouldn't mind if I had a ball of yarn for him to play with. He's funny, though. Like, Remember when the Social Security thing, he came out and he's like, I've seen it. There's not real money there. It's just pieces of paper, like IOUs. I'm like, you mean like a check or a bond? I mean, what did he expect? To go into the basement of the treasury and find like Scrooge McDuck's money bin with all the social security money for him to just swim around in? He's kind of off on a weird tangent. I think he sits there with like the risk game and, and just throws the dice and sees where he wants to go next. I'm really waiting for him to come on TV and be like, we're going to war with Switzerland. Yeah, they think they're so cool with their pocket knives and chocolates. Democrats won't take away your chocolate. That's all I got. I can do the running man. Um, uh, good evening, um, faculty and students. As, uh, as president of the university, uh, I'd, I'd like to thank all of you for turning out this evening. Um, I, I understand that uh, two of the fraternities are introducing new water bong technology at mixers this evening. So uh, to have even this small scattering of you is a, is, is a treat for me. Um, now, um, as, as, as president of the university, I, I do feel that it, that it is incumbent upon me uh, to, to address the recent uh, Supreme Court ruling uh, regarding the, the United States military. Uh, federal funding and, and access to, uh, to, to campuses. Um, many of you have spoken out in opposition uh, to this issue, but I, I, I am here tonight uh, to explain to you why we, uh, meaning, meaning myself and, and the trustees, have agreed to allow the United States military to, to store chemical weapons in our unused dorm rooms. Now, um, m m many of you are, no doubt, uh, opposed to, to living in, in such close proximity to substances that uh, if, if accidentally released, could cause um, large-scale large, large, large pl pl plague-like plague uh, symptoms uh, to, to spread across campus. And you've, uh, you, you've made your feelings known to me in several ways. Um, uh, letter bombs, uh, death threats, uh, burning me in effigy, um, uh, so someone slashed the tires on my new SUV hybrid, and, um, oh, oh, and uh, someone was, was kind enough to hang my wife's cocker spaniel from one of the goalposts on the football uh, pr pr practice field. Um, now, I, I think I, sh I should stress that, that no one, uh, the government included, is, is trying to tell you that you, you, you have to like uh, living next door to chemical weapons. I mean, I, I, I certainly don't. And we're, we're, you know, we're, we're entitled to our opinions. You, you, you are free to, um, to, to, to speak out against this, uh, to, to, to write, write letters to the editor, to, um, to, to point people away from the rooms that contain the weapons, you know, don't go in there, um, to, to, to uh, stockpile antibiotics, or really even, even, uh, even hazmat suits. Um, uh, the pr presence of, of, of the chemical agents in, in our dorm rooms sh should not be looked upon uh, as an endorsement um, by this university of, of chemical and, and biological warfare. Um, but um, what, what, what you need to understand is that as, as, a, as, a, as a public institution, we, we, we receive a lot of our funding for, from, from the federal government, and along with that comes you know, certain privileges and, and access. Uh, 
I, th I think it was, uh, it's been a little over a year ago that the Supreme Court ruled that we, we had to admit uh, military recruiters, allow, allow them on, on campus. Um, I guess it was oh, about six months ago that they, they started uh, holding war games on the lacrosse field. And, um, and oh, it's, it's, it's heck, it's really only been three or four weeks since, since the Air Force deposited the, uh, the, the nuclear warheads um, in the storage shed um, back, back, back behind the quad. Uh, so, you know, we, we've been sharing the campus with the military for quite a while, and, and it was just the logical next step, really, to the storage of, of, of chemical weapons. Um, but, you know, it, it's not as, as if the increased military presence on campus uh, hasn't had its positive aspects. No, no, um, uh, faculty payroll is way down since all, uh, all registered Democrats were, were asked to leave. Um, the, the, the presence of, of military police in, in classrooms uh, it certainly cut down on the number, number of disturbances in that area. And, and, and also, I feel that, that a compulsory registration of the international students will certainly foster a greater sense of community for them, uh, as, as will the, the ID badges uh, they're, they're being uh, asked to wear at all times, uh, as well as the, the, the new dorms that are being constructed, uh, especially for them. May, maybe you've seen them there. They're on the far side of campus uh, behind the, the cyclone fencing and the, and the razor wire. Um, I haven't seen inside yet, but I'm, I'm told they're, uh, they're, they're, they're quite nice. Um, so in, in, in closing, um, but I, I think I, I should remind all of you of just the awesome role that uh, the military does play in our lives. I mean, truly, they, they are the watchdogs of democracy. Um, and, you know, in, in, in spite of the fact that the uh, uh, amount of money given to this university seems to keep decreasing with every uh, funding cycle, still, still in spite of that, um, if our nation's defenders need a place to store their anthrax, I think it is our responsibility to say, right over here with that, um, no matter how we might happen to feel about it um, per personally. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's really all. Um, so, uh, uh, good night and good luck. And we're coming to you from HTV, the official television station of Hannah TV! Woo! Go Warriors! Number one. And we are back after an absence of almost two weeks to bring you the return of your favorite current events program, Cheer Chat! We just want to thank you for all your letters and emails of support. Yeah, it was like really hard when all those people were writing the principal and saying we shouldn't be allowed to do this show. Okay. Yeah, but thanks to you guys, we're back, back, and ready to spread our message the best way we know how, through cheer. cheer. Let's do it now, ready? Okay. Two, Two, four, six, eight. Who, who should we exterminate? Iraqis, Afghanis, and Pakistanis, the Saudis, Kuwaitis, and the Iranis. Good <laughs> worry, number one. All of these countries are enemies of the United States because they all spawn terrorists. Oh my God, do you know as Jenkins said? What? She's our English She's teacher. She said that yeah. Timothy McVeigh was a terrorist. How clueless can you get? Timothy McVeigh was a pawn. Exactly. The Arabs put a mind control chip in his butt cheek. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> how naive. people do not blow things up. Yeah, how naive can you be? I know. Well, speaking of that, let's do the profiling chair. Okay. okay. Ready? Two, four, six, eight. Who should we humiliate? Iraqis, Afghanis, and Pakistanis, the Saudis, Kuwaitis, and the Iranis. We got number one, good warriors. Leave no Arab uninspected, or they'll get you undetected. We got number one. Oh my God. You know, it's, this is serious, though. People do not realize how important it is to profile and detect every Arab. Yeah, it's not just about whether Arab. or not you have a bomb. Mm -mm. It's there's like all kinds of evidences of their terrorism that we don't they don't know we know about. Yeah, like a lot of future suicide bombers have been stopped because yeah. they were in this certain kind of Casio watch. And we've identified that as a terrorist watch. But you know what? Like Mr. Randall said, that AP history idiot, he's <laughs> like, that watch is the most common brand in the whole Middle East. <laughs> Oh, They're all terrorists. So, you know what? Huh? A lot of the school's faculty are starting to sound like enemy combatants. I totally agree. We should do the Homeland Security cheer. Hmm. Ready? Two, Two, four, six, eight. Who should we investigate? The hippies, the commies, Mr. Randall, Miss Jenkins. Jenkins. My ex-boyfriend is a total traitor. He totally needs to go. And Susie, and 
Susie, she wore my shirt on Wednesday and pretended like she was the first one to wear it when really I was because I wore it on Monday and I was so much cooler than her. Actually, you know, that's, she is a total dweeb, but I don't know if she deserves Guantanamo. But um, okay. anyway, and we are totally out of time. It is so great to be back, yes. though. And please keep those letters and emails coming because without your support, who knows if anyone would value what two attractive skinny white girls have to say. I know. It's like being young and pretty isn't enough anymore. So true. But uh, join us next week when our show's topic is... What to do if an Arab sits next to you on the bus. Have you ever seen one? An Arab or a bus? Anyway. Ah! Guys, are you sick and tired of having to use all those fruity, girly shampoos every time you take your man shower? Are you tired of having to choose between the starfruit infused shampoo and the honeysuckle oil conditioner? When is someone going to make a shampoo for men? Well, through this special TV offer, Ramco Products is proud to present Manpoo. Manpoo is made for you, the working man, the man's man. Manpoo has the consistency of motor oil each bottle emblazoned with your favorite NASCAR number. Turn the bottle upside down and watch the bikini slowly fall off the supermodel. Inside, Manpoo is made with ingredients that men can enjoy shower after shower. Ground up hockey sticks, cigar juice, gunpowder, and a hint of Budweiser. That tingle in your penis means it's working. So go out and buy a gallon today and let Manpoo take you away to a man land of clean you've never experienced before. Not responsible for lost hair or scalp may lead to gayness. Hi, and welcome to Home Shopping Bonanza. My name is Candy, and I am so glad that we can be joined by so many of you, millions of you viewers at home. Oh, what's that? I've got Charlie, my producer, just buzzing in my ear. What's that, Charlie? It's more like four viewers. He is such a kidder. Hey, Charlie, he's over there in the booth. Oh, come on, you can wave with more than your middle finger. Oh, my goodness. Well, first up today, we have this beautiful little white collectible dog. Isn't it lovely, folks? Now, the first thing that sets it apart from other little collectible dogs is its white color. I mean, that just brings to mind so many things. Pure, truthful, just plain better. In fact, last year for my little niece Arian's birthday, we got her one of these little dogs, and she just said it seemed so clean and bright, and I couldn't agree more. Hey, Arian. Oh, what's that? I'm terrible. Oh, what a kidder. Now, let's talk about stitching. Now, this stitching is so fine. Not clumsy migrant workers' hands here, no siree. It's the fine stitching of child labor. Thanks, Kathy Lee Gifford. Now, next, let's talk about the little feet. The little feet and arms, they move. Not a cripple. No siree. You know, but this might make a good present for a cripple. You could give it to them and say, hey, you might not have any working arms or legs, but this swell-looking white dog sure does. Now let's go ahead and go to the phone. Who's our first caller? Hi, uh, my name is Roberta, and I wanted to tell you I am purchasing this dog. Oh, great. Now are you purchasing it for its beautiful color or for a cripple? See, this is what I'm saying. A lot of things you say should be can really be taken in the wrong way. Oh, goodness. That, okay, I mean, let's really hang up on that be... caller. Oh, goodness. No need to get worked up like a cranky Italian. <laughs> what? Oh, you hate me, Charlie? Oh, you hate me? Well, at least my lifestyle's not an abomination. <laughs> All right, folks. When we come back after the commercial break, we're going to be going coloring through the Bible. Join us, won't you? Good evening and welcome to Hannity and Combs. I'm your host, Sean Hannity. Tonight, our top story is a video that alleges that the White House knew about Katrina before it happened. Uh, it's not alleged, Sean. Uh, they're clearly on tape 48 hours before the storm hit, discussing how unprepared everyone was. Yeah, I mean, which only shows their concern. Well, okay, that's one way of looking at it, I guess. But first, we're going to go to Greta Van Susteren, who has breaking news on the Natalie Holloway case. Greta? We have your Ruby says she's drinking with Natalie on the night of her disappearance. More at 11. 
Uh, Sean, Sounds um, like a break. Natalie Holloway's been fish food for like a year now, and his one death. I mean, how many people died in Katrina? 48 hours, Sean. You know I mean, what? Nobody, that. nobody can be so insensitive to so many deaths, okay? Maybe you're right, sorry. Now we're going to go to Geraldo Rivera, who's got an update on the bird flu epidemic. Geraldo? Sean, it's all about bird flu tonight. Another case has been documented in Thailand, and the profitable poultry industry is facing a potential planetary pandemic. Watch my show. It's a lot of peas. Uh, uh, Sean, um, how many cases of bird flu have there been? Like, a hundred? Can we discuss, like, a real issue, like Bush's inability to act on sound advice? We're in the middle of uh, hurricane you know, season. You, you know, just as always, you're playing the blame game, and the American uh, people out there do not appreciate it. You're going to blame George Bush for Katrina? You're twisting my words. It's not what I said I don't think all. I... You know what? Shut up. Okay. Okay. Speaking of which, we're going to go to Bill O'Reilly, who's got an update on the renewal of the Patriot Act. Bill? Now, we have to renew the Patriot Act. We'll take a no-spin look next. Hmm. Sean, um, our show tonight was supposed to be about Katrina, not about, like, you know, Natalie Holloway and the Patriot you know, Act. You're blame gaming again here. Nobody I, wants to hear it, all right? Sean, I, I, I'm just trying to make a point. I, could you let me talk? You, you know what? you got to stop talking. I, I'm so, I, I, get down. I'm a, I work here, too. Well, I, barely. I have a, only because I let you. I have a, I'll, t I'll take away I your parking spot. Like, get down. I, get down. Look, I mean, get, go get I, me a hot I, pocket. Get, go get me a hot pocket. Join us tomorrow night where I will talk about how I want to make sweet love to George W. Bush. Good night.